He was a football cheerleader and didn't bang any of the, uh, the football guys. Wow. <laughs> very nice. And sitting over here is a guy I'm, I'm very happy to meet, Scott Dorson. What's Thank up, you. man? How hey. are you? I'm fine. How about you? Good. Now, I just, you know, uh, I just watched your movie for the third time. Well, not your movie, but the movie that your uh, part of your life is yeah. based on, Behind the Candelabra with uh, with Liberace. Real fascinating stuff. John watched it as well. And, um, yeah. you know, uh, watching that film, I really have to say, you're a survivor, man. I'm glad you got through a crazy a crazy experience like yeah, that and well. <laughs> um and you're here to tell the tale uh nice to meet you well thank you it's it's an honor to be here yeah and uh, we're having a great time in New York. Yeah, now Dennis uh, has become a quick new friend of yours. He's a good man. Well, you know, Dennis bailed me out. Nobody else would touch me. You know, Weintraub, all of them, they turned their back on me. And uh, he came to my rescue, paying for my defense attorney. Jerry Weintraub, the producer of the Candelabra film. Uh, yeah. Who, and then Soderbergh directed it, right? Right. Yeah. Steven Soderbergh. These are heavyweights, man. Michael oh, yeah. Douglas, and you're played by Matt Damon. Matt Damon. We've yeah. got the best uh, producer, director, uh, cast. Uh, you can't go wrong. I mean, the the the, the picture is number one here in this uh, yeah, at no, HBO. And it's good. And it's, it's really good. yeah. And it's number one in Europe. It's all the European countries have picked it up. Now you got into some trouble. What happened recently? Where you had well, to bail that? <laughs> well, you know, as a, I don't think anybody in life sets out to be an addict. And, of course. And unfortunately, we do some stupid Look, man, things when I'm, we're I'm under the influence. I'm with you here, man. You're not going to find any judgment from me, man. Yeah. I'm an addict. Well, it was misuse of credit card and, right. and ID, and. Uh, uh, you know, he's hired me, David Houston, the finest uh, attorney that money can buy. A good man. Oh, a good yeah. man, Dennis. Uh, yeah. good, good for you, man. I'll take care out. of him. You know, yeah. what happens is Chrissy Summers over here, uh, my little cheerleader, and, right. and Madam Suzette, who you yeah. know, uh, Madam, they saw the movie and just felt such compassion for him. The next morning, they're in my office saying, right. what, we got to get this guy out of jail. I'm like, why? <laughs> and uh, so they said, look, at he, he was a young guy, 16. Started right. having sex with the biggest celebrity, maybe of one the of the biggest. Last, no, is that a little? Was, was a sick? Where, 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 the, I was sixteen. In the yeah. movie, when, wow. when the, the, the the scene where it depicts you meeting him backstage, you were sixteen at that time. Sixteen. Okay. Yes. Okay. You went to see him in concert uh -huh. in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Then he then he takes in Liberace to clean up his homosexuality. Decided right. he was going to adopt him. Tell the world he was adopting him. Right. As his son. As his yeah, son. Yeah. Uh, just just because he had to keep his image. Right. Uh, and then uh, it, and then they loaded him up. With cocaine, pharmaceutical cocaine. Yeah, the good stuff. And him and Liberace just partied, <laughs> did all the crazy things that they did. Uh, I mean, in this day and age, that same thing had happened with a celebrity. He'd go to prison. No, of course. So and, I, and, and yeah, and, so I mean, yeah. and he made you get uh, plastic surgery to look like him. That's right. Yes. Now, how creepy is that when he comes out with a picture and he says to the doctor, well, uh, another brilliant cameo. Rob Lowe plays the doctor. Yes. And right. he says, "I want you to look like this." And yes. Him. Now, how odd is that? Well, it was scary, but you know, I was very young at the time, and you know, I was in and out of foster homes, and he was really the first person that really cared for me. You're I, vulnerable. I thought, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, I was thrown with all the, you know, I was fascinated with the wealth and the glamour and all the glitz, and, yeah. and so I did anything I could to please him, and, and I did. So um, when he got out, when I got him out of jail. We had never met except by Skype. Right. And uh, he gave me a big hug, got a hug, and he says, Thank you so much. I says, Don't have to thank me. You're just going to get plastic surgery to look like me. <laughs> 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 like, now, uh, hey, hey, listen, come on. Liberace the second here. I've already trained him. Man. I got him in pink. <laughs> yeah, he, just, he, he, just, he, he just likes the women. That's, that's, that's right. right. Now, you, uh, you're a bisexual. Bisexual. Now, yeah. now, is that true to this day? I mean, well, I'm a sexual. I think I'm a sexual human being. Right. I, I hate labels. But yeah, I would say so. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there. You know, I, I told uh, Dennis. I says we got. You know, I'm surrounded with 15 beautiful girls. I says you just gotta get some guys out here. <laughs> yeah, we'll calm down with that. We'll slow it up on that part. But no, so so describe exactly what happened to you. Uh, so we we've told a bit of the story, but give uh -huh. us it in your words. And this is 1977. Your friend takes you to see Liberace in concert in Las Vegas. He knows somebody who gets you backstage. You get backstage, Liberace uh, takes a liking to you, you're young, and, and you start living with him, working with him, having sex with him almost yeah. immediately, right? I mean... About a week later, yeah. Yeah, and, and so what happens from there on? Well, I mean, it's, it, uh, you know, yeah, I go backstage, and then uh, he invites us to his home, and, you know, he had dogs, and, and one of the dogs had an eye infection, and I was working for the veterinarian. I said, oh, hey, I got some great medicine that I can send you. You're a big animal lover, yeah, and you want to be a vet at the time. Yes, yeah. and so he gave me his private number, and he says, call me. 
So I called him and I says, hi, Lee, I got your medicine. I'll, I'm going to mail it to you. And he says, oh, no, why don't you why don't you bring it up? I'll fly you in if you could just deliver it. You <laughs> okay, know? Right. So that's where it all started. Yeah, nice move. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, I think my, Michael, Michael Douglas and Matt Damon, I mean, come on. Did a great job. Oh, that's the sex scenes in there were, were incredible. I mean, now, uh, was it always a situation where you were sort of the top, for lack of a better yeah, term? I mean, you and know, was he, uh, he was sort of paranoid about that because he thought you could you could leave him for a woman at any time. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm glad it happened because you know he was, you know, he was diagnosed with AIDS. Yeah, and so if he, so, if, if if you had been the bottom a couple of times, you might have been exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah uh, interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so now you start using cocaine, and it's kind of a crazy lifestyle, and then you guys start arguing a lot, and then you see that maybe you were just one in a line of a bunch of guys, and we sort of did the same thing too, and you felt used. In the movie, it does depict, uh, are you happy with the way the movie depicts Absolutely, it? I think yeah. they followed I, uh, my book to the T. Uh, they did a very good job uh, uh, sticking to the, the the book, and it was a love affair, a very tragic uh, 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 story, with the drugs and and then of course the, the death of of Liberace. Right. But it was a very fascinating life. It was fun. It was fast. A, yes. It was a fast life. And you know, once he got me hooked. Now you got to remember, I was only sixteen years old. He was forty eight years my senior. He and got me hooked. Went out pharmaceutical coke yeah. man at sixteen. Yeah. Like whoa. Well, he got me hooked, <laughs> and then you know he says, "Oh my God, I've created a monster." So then. He just pushed me right out. He, Which he, is what he said about the first guy. He yeah. said, the first, to get you in, he said, I created a monster. Right. He keeps creating monsters. Yes. Right. Yes. And then, so, you know, I fought back. I said, well, you're not going to discard me like I'm a piece of trick, you know. Which he didn't uh, get. A lot of people didn't fight back. No. Right. No, I was the only one that would fight back. So I took him on. I was just, what, uh, 20, some, 20 some years old, and I took on this big, powerful man. And, you know, they lied from the beginning. They made me out to be a, a, a horrible they said a disgruntled employee. They said that I was a dope addict. That I and they never. One thing he didn't do is he never. He never told the world that you know he was the reason why I was on dope. Right now, did you he know? do it himself or he? Yeah, he did of, drugs he, he too. Did, yeah, yeah, but he wasn't like a full blown addict. No, he wasn't. Here, no, right? no, no, no. Well, what what you was the uh, in watching the movie? Amazing, but uh, I, I was curious what the drug was that the doctor. Had prescribed probably amphetamines. It was bifetamines and, and pharmaceutical sure. cocaine, quaaludes. He was prescribing co cocaine. Oh, yeah. like I, I gotta no, tell you, amphetamines. You same thing with Doc, Dr. Max Jameson. We just had a guy who wrote the book about the guy who had Kennedy hooked on amphetamines and to lose sure, weight, yeah, and same to stay thing. active. Same yeah. exact thing, yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you a funny story. You know, it was Liberace, Michael Jackson, and myself in, in this limousine. There's a party. And we're all, all, all of our faces are wrapped up. <laughs> Michael just had his nose job. Lee had a full blown uh, facelift. I had my cheekbones done, and it was, it was funnier than hell. Yeah. And here we all go to Palm Springs to recover. Road trip. <laughs> and, a road trip yeah. you want and Dr. Jack starts, he was so out of it because he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. The doctor himself yeah. was. Yeah, and he, yeah, we, Rob Lowe's yeah. great because he plays him. He's, yeah. he's, he's doing surgery and you can tell he's looped on yeah. something. He's in, your, he's in your nose. Well, it's, it was... It, 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 it was a true story. I mean, this guy was trying to shoot Liberace up and missing the veins and everything oh. with Demerol. Oh, man, with so, Demerol. Demerol. Oh. Remember, this was the 70s. No, yeah. Was, yeah. The best decade ever. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I think it beats the 60s and the 80s. because uh, was the 70s it was, were the, the 70s was kind of like the uh, the bridge between those yeah. both yeah. crazy times. Yeah. All, the, all the drugs in the world. Sex, anything sex went. was wide open. Yeah. No HIV, no condom. Yeah, that was the greatest decade and, of all. Anything went, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, you were right in the heart of it there. There. Sex, rock, and you know, rock and roll. And he's with, he was with everybody. He's all all the dignitaries and uh, you know who well, came through yeah. Vegas. Like what? Uh, you don't have to name. Well, I mean, I've right? wined and dined with presidents, queens, kings, yeah, queens. Uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of queens. <laughs> <laughs> but so they all wanted to see Liberace. They all, uh, wanted, they all wanted to see Liberace. Yes, yes. Because well, he, he was a big he, act. He was the biggest act in, in Vegas. Now you got to remember the the Hilton was the the biggest showroom. He was the only one that could go in there and um, bill by himself. And that was his deal bill. was at the Hilton. Do you yeah, mean, the Hilton. You know. Yeah, he could fill the. He did two shows: the dinner and, and the evening show. He broke Elvis Presley's record. He still holds the the World Book of Guinness for the fastest uh, piano player ever and the highest paid to this day, the highest paid musician ever. <laughs> 
He, what was he pulling down a week? Twenty-three million just off the the Las Vegas contract for a year. Uh, Eighteen uh, weeks. weeks. Twenty-three oh, million dollars. Wow. But that was in the seventies. Wow. But a million meant something. Oh, I know. Yeah. So he sets you up with a with an apartment there or whatever, and and uh, and anything you want, right? He buys your cars and oh yeah, and uh, uh, jewelry. I'll tell you a funny story. You know, uh, Baron Hilton put our casino in in in, the, in our own home. And you had he, a casino in your house. In the in casino. And he brought, yeah, he brought in all the slot machines for us. <laughs> oh it was wild. <laughs> that, it used oh to be God, the, the degenerate camera the, in my leg is like oh my God, right <laughs> It used to be the garage. And uh, we were in Buffalo, New York, and I saw this beautiful 1962 Silver Cloud II Rolls Royce. Right. And it was gold. And I said, Oh my God, I oh, is that and I just stared at well the, my twenty first birthday was um, about a week away. And, you know, he, he got that Rolls Royce and he put it in a big box with a big bowl in it. Oh, my God. Right in the casino. That's what type of a guy he was. He was a very generous man. Sounds it. But he was a very controlling man. No, that's how he controlled you with the money. Well, of course. And the gifts. Of yeah. course. I mean, I mean, anybody's going to do course. that. Right. The golden now, rule. You got the gold, you make the rule. Yeah. Think about it. See, Dennis, I, I ever tell Kind of like what the Dennis controls these poor girls or... Walking on the beaches, looking at the peaches. Well, you know, Arnie, Arnie, the girl, you know, we watch the show. Yeah, thank we, you. Uh, we play it in the parlor at the Bunny Ranch. Yeah. And the girls are concerned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we had a little breakup last week. Yes, yes, yes. And absolutely. They, they're willing to give you a helping hand. <laughs> I'm uh, sure they are. <laughs> so, well, listen, I think, I, think I, I have a, I just found this out from my agent. I think I will be in the Los Angeles area, which means I will make sure I get to the Las Vegas area the first week of July. Well, wait, wait, and you know what? Come to Northern Nevada. That's where the bunny race. I have stores, uh, brothels outside okay, of Vegas. Okay, well, you tell now. me where to go. But if I go out there, and I think I'm going. It's a ninety percent chance I'm coming out there. Are you excited, girls? Yeah. Yes. That is the greatest yes. thing excitement ever. <laughs> they, they can make a lot of things. I know. That's all we need. Okay, well, that's going to be amazing. But well, we're sitting here with the great Dennis, Dennis Hoff, and uh, that's going to be fun. But we're talking more about Scott Thorson here, who's got the movie out behind the candelabra. Matt Damon plays him about his affair with Liberace for five years. Talk about sex with Michael Jackson. Yeah. Now, what was this about? Well, uh, 78, uh, about 77, 78. Uh, uh, I was introduced to Michael by Liberace. Right. Michael and I became very good friends. And then when the breakup in 82, when I broke up with Lee, I went on tour with, with Michael. This is when Michael was just branching off on his own. He got rid of the right. his brothers and family. Right. Started the Thriller tour. Thriller was just about to happen. Yeah. Exactly. And, and this is when he became a huge star. I went to England with him, and we went to when he did Say Say with uh, Paul McCartney. Right, and had a wonderful time with with Michael. Yeah, and uh, and did you in fact have sex with Michael Jackson? Yeah, we had an affair. Yeah, <laughs> on and off. <laughs> wow, not a lot of people. I mean, uh, I mean, no, obviously, I I always said to myself, people wonder what Michael Jackson to me was obviously homosexual. He was on tour with his his brothers, and they were uh, you know having sex with all these women. And I think he was confused, and that was part of his problem. He was he was in that world, and you know, I mean, but so did you have a loving affair? I mean, it was like a well, it was on and off. Yeah. This is this is when I was just uh, uh, you know getting over uh, the breakup with Lee. And then Michael was getting so big. I mean, he and got then, his biggest star. Got, yeah. I mean, you and the Barachi just to, uh, you know, for people who haven't seen the film, you should definitely check it out. It's not on demand now. It ended with you suing him, and you ended up getting some money, yeah. not a lot of money. And then a couple years later, uh, after that, you're, you're in an apartment somewhere in L.A., and the phone rings, it's Liberace, and he tells you he's dying of AIDS. That's and right, he wants yeah. to see you. Now, did you feel, you went to go see him one last time, and he yes. was bad, very thin. It did was you, horrible. He was down to 96 pounds. Now, do you feel he was doing something nice? Where he was just warning you, hey, listen, you know, I might uh, have a. Well, yeah, yeah, I think he, he wanted to. He he kept asking me how my health was, and then finally, when I put two to two together, then right. of, of course, you know, Vegas is a very small town. Yeah, and, and the rumors started flying, and then um, his doctor. I got very angry with Dr. Ghanem at the time. It was my doctor, right? Yeah, and uh, he he wouldn't tell me. He you know they denied the fact. And uh, so I went and I ha I got checked and thank God I didn't have it. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, listen, yeah, uh, I mean, you know. Now at the yeah. time, were you having sex with Michael Jackson when you find this out? Oh yeah, yeah. So we, you were at a full blown affair with Michael Jackson when you find out yes, that your ex lover yes, had yes, AIDS. Yes. 
And then, and, you know, as Michael was getting bigger, then we cooled it because we didn't want the press. You know, Michael was very paranoid of this. Was he bisexual or full blown uh, Michael, uh, homosexual? Uh, Michael is gay, as far as I'm concerned. The stuff, I mean, the stuff with the women trying to, uh, you know, uh, Elvis's daughter, just all for the press. It was all publicity. Right. What about the know? kids? I mean, based on what you know of Michael, are they? I don't, I, I don't buy, uh, buy it for a minute. The, that they're his the, children? Uh, Michael and Liberace had something in common. They both really just didn't have time to date women. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, so, but well, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. Not a lot of people, that, and, that's news. Not yeah, a lot of and people I want to say, said, say yeah. I said that, yeah. I want to say I passed two lie detector tests, and it was, I believe you, you know, um, Alan Butterfield from the National Enquirer, before they would print this story, they, right. they, they flew in two of the best lie detector guys. They were FBI agents, excess FBI agents. And uh, they even offered, uh, you know, Michael Jackson was even offered uh, to take the, the lie detector he test. <laughs> he was busy. Well, now, did you, how does Michael Jackson's family react to you when they well, hear that? I mean, they, I, I, they're, there's, I'm sure there's, they're denying it, but, uh, you know, they haven't touched me. I mean, do you they, know of anybody else he was having sex with? Any uh, other men? No, I don't. You I don't, don't, but you, you had an affair with him. They used to last on and off for about 82 to 85 ish. Yeah. And it, it's, Which uh, really uh, got huge, yeah. Well, yeah, he was really huge. Then. Yeah, yeah. And then he started getting weird with plastic surgery. Then he got hooked on the drugs. Right, and, right. And then, you know, then, then the allegations of the kids. Now, one thing I can say, he was no child. That? No, he was no child molester. Without question, and I'm no. molester. No. And don't forget, he went to trial. He was acquitted for that. This kid uh, took twenty million from Michael. Yeah. There was the uncle yeah, that people did forget, this. Yeah, people forget Pe about people that. People forget the kid about took a bunch that. of money. Exactly. And uh, you know, Michael paid. Michael paid him off. Uh, because he didn't want his career. No, Michael that make, was a that huge makes, That makes star. sense. You're talking about yeah. a lot of money at stake and still... Yeah. Now, do you feel bad? I feel bad for the kids, though. I mean, there are such pawns in this whole thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. And then just recently, uh, Paris tried to get yeah, his... Yeah, terrible, um, terrible. A horrible situation that uh, they're in. And that whole family is so dysfunctional. No. I mean, each, all the kids. Yeah, it's horrible. They're rich. They're famous. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, that's awful. awful. It, it, it can be rough, but I tell you, yeah, you never know how different people uh, react to different things. Now, you also had sex in, in the White House when the Reagan House, was yeah. uh, in office. How many people can say you had sex in the Lincoln bedroom? Right? Well, I'm sure, I'm, <laughs> sure, I'm sure George W. Bush can never say that. No. Uh, what about, uh, now, who, now, who was it with? Was it with Michael? No, no, Liberace. This you and Liberace is, this, had sex in the White House while Reagan was in the house? Reagan was just being sworn in. We we did the inauguration <laughs> there. We were we were we were um, and you banged guests. him in the Lincoln bedroom. Yeah, we were guests, uh, and then Nancy and Ronald Reagan was in office, and that's where we stayed in the White House. Wow! Well, I want to give you a round of applause. Did <laughs> <laughs> I send my hat off? I like that. I like that. <laughs> so the, yeah. wait, the inauguration happens in eighty, so in nineteen eighty, it's first inauguration. Yeah. And because that falls in timeline when you were with yep. uh, with him, so y y he plays piano, you entertain, and you stay in the Lincoln bedroom, mm -hmm. and you have sex that night. That's that's correct. While Reagan was pretending to have sex with Nancy, <laughs> 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 or trying to get it up. It, it, <laughs> impressed me. Tell me you had sex with Ronald Reagan. No, no, no. <laughs> He's not <laughs> something we want to hear. No, no, no. No, so you actually, that's mm. that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. So now uh, followed up. I mean, what an amazing life. The Wonderland murders, the famous murders of John. Yes. Holmes, the porn star, you're involved completely in that. Right. Well, you know, I this this happened in '81, and uh, I was uh, I was going in partnership with Nash in some, several um, clubs. Nash was a big nightclub owner in Los Angeles. He was also the biggest drug lord in Los Angeles. He brought in all the heroin and Supposedly cocaine. Supposedly the guy who ordered the hits, this guy Nash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Holmes sets up the robbery at his house. I happened to fly in there from Tahoe. We were performing at the, the Sahara Tahoe. To pick up a pound of cocaine, you from and Eddie Mirachi, Nash. right? Yeah, a pound. Yeah, <laughs> Jack, <laughs> Jack start. Yeah, Jack starts shoots himself in the head. The surgeon, right? So I needed a new drug. Eddie becomes my my drug supplier. Your doctor was supplying you a blow. Shot himself in the head. Yeah, right. And then uh, Nash takes over and becomes my drug uh, supplier. I go into business with him. I happen to be in the wrong place at the time when this happened up in Laurel Canyon when Nash. Um, he came through the doors, and they found out that he was responsible for setting up the robbery and leaving the back door open. Right, right. And they beat the hell out of him. With bats and pipes. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened was that um, they ordered him, uh, they ordered these guys to go up to uh, take uh, Holmes up there, and Holmes, they forced Holmes to, to 
participate in, in some of the killings. Right. They made home and yeah. beat a couple of women to death. Right. right, right and right. they even used Liberace's car to go up in there. Oh, they because, did? Because... They got the, it from you? Well, yeah. I was. It was in the driveway there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, where's a where's a, where's a powder blue uh, with rhinestones <laughs> Rolls Royce when you did it? With a powder coke in no, the No, actually, actually, it was a Bill Blast Lincoln. <laughs> of course, it was. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they they beat these people to death with a pipe. Uh, Nobody knew about this. I mean, the police, uh, you know, the famous Tom Lang, they did the O.J. murders. Right, right? He was the right. lead detective on this. Yeah, the L.A. cops were weird back then. Oh yeah, yeah. and uh, they said. Uh, you know, they kept that a hush up because they didn't want the public to know about what was used. And uh, I saw the pipe. Matter of fact, it had threads on it. And the people were beaten so bad. And I, I, where, where the dentation of the oh, pipe threads were yeah. in the forehead. Wow. Blood and hair. And, uh, and women. Were yeah, and I heard, I heard uh, Gregory Dial say this to Nash. And I said, oh, you know, and, and I saw the blood and I saw the pipe. So it was a big guy. Uh, Nash yeah. is an Armenian guy, like sort of a yeah. dangerous guy who owned clubs and yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, he put then he puts a contract on me for 150 grand. Why? Because you were there. You were a witness. Yeah. Well, and he starts smoking the crack. Right. Not good. Gets paranoid. Decides to have everybody whacked, yeah. including you know they were they were going to go after uh, John and all that. John ends up dying of AIDS. Couple before years they, later. before the police could uh, get them to testify, so you went into the witness protection program. I went into the witness protection program, yeah. And then Nash died. You didn't have to be there anymore. You found no, Nash is a Nash is a, was alive. I tested. Is he still alive? Oh yeah. He, oh he yeah, is. Yeah. Oh okay. They shot. They shot him five times. Oh, yeah. Okay. You took five bullets, right? I took five so now, bullets. Do they know where Nash is? Oh yeah, he's in Los Angeles. He's not in well, jail. Well, here's here's the funny I like thing. I apologize for everything I said about Mr. Nash. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when when I testified, eleven people voted guilty, but he got to the one. Well, then the feds picked him up in '99. He confessed to the murders. He confessed to the bribing of the witness and the money laundering and the racketeering. They charged him for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of drug. I mean, fine. 33 months in prison for having all those people. Wow. That's it. Wow. And he got away with it. Wow. No, no, I find this so interesting. It's like, fascinating. He goes into the witness protection program. Right. But he still wants to be in the limelight like he was with Liberace. Yeah. So what does he do? He comes in a becomes an evangelist with Billy Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, gonna say true. you must not think and, much of our show. You're in the witness protection and, program. Yeah. And you're here. <laughs> and Pat Robertson at the, the seven hundred club. And I built a very big ministry there. Uh, that's just right. I know. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, you, you, what are, you have one of the most fascinating lives you can imagine. So you're just like in their face. Like, look, I don't care. I'm going to still live my life. Yeah. And, and, and I be was glamorous even and famous. And I was crazy back then. I had pounds of... You know, I said, what a better way to get my, 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 my Coke from one city to another when I could just put it in the back seat with me in the feds, you Why know, not? you know, and boom, with feds. I, I went right <laughs> through the airport, you know, there's my, you know, I didn't have to check any baggage and, you know, the cops, they, they took me right you're through. you're with them. Yeah, I'm with now, them. I mean, think about, think about the, the Los Angeles and show business. Like, like Michael Jackson is basically one degree away from you with a pound of blow and the feds. And now did Michael Jackson do coke? No, he didn't do coke. He, he was coke. very against drugs back then. Okay. It wasn't until the surgeons, until the plastic surgery, he when he started And then when he lit himself on fire by mistake. Yeah, and yeah. then that, that started it too. And, yeah. and I was there that day. And um, he- You were uh, on the set of that commercial? When yeah, he lit on yeah. Fire? And he starts getting addicted to the painkillers. Right. So it's can you imagine your listeners? Your listeners are out there. How, how <laughs> inadequate they feel that they got to scrounge for a, a, a gram, <laughs> a pound. And this guy's throwing pounds seem, around. Doesn't it seem like cocaine? Uh, 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 some of the, the younger guys here don't do a lot of these drugs, and I, I applaud them for it. But I don't know if any younger people are still doing coke. It seems like coke is obsolete. Yeah. It seems like everybody's taking Adderall or something. Cocaine has become an obsolete thing. Where you got to get it. You got to. It, it's not a convenient drug. Mm -hmm. They seem like the first time I did. Ex to see. I said to myself, they perfected drugs. It was in the early 90s. I said, this is all the things you want to feel like, heroin blow and everything in one pill. You take it before you go out, it lasts 12 hours. You don't have to find a, a bathroom stall and put it on a key and do, you know, every 10 minutes. Yeah. But, you know, it seems like cocaine, especially smoking it now, yeah. is like an obsolete thing. 
But um, yeah, it's were you, were you, guys, were you guys smoking it or snorting it? Oh no, we were smoking it. And we were snorting they, they it, were smoking it, shooting it, bro. Yeah, free basing, shooting coke, my god. Yeah. Oh. But so, so now, how does it end with Michael Jackson? Just because did he basically say to you, "Look, I'm I'm just too famous to keep doing this"? Or well, yeah, and then you know his management team, and and, and then uh, you know it it all changed, and and uh, I was tired too at that point. I wanted uh, I wanted out of the limelight for a while. Right. Well, right. who did you move on to? Pardon me. Who'd you move on to from there? Yeah, what'd you start doing after <laughs> after Michael? I mean, it's hard to keep going. Like you know, you got well, Liberace, yeah. Michael Jackson. Well, there's Larry Gatlin, there's Whoa. Loretta Lynn, there's, uh, I mean, the sex parties back then, and then Siegfried and Roy's well, parties. We know about them, they had some fun. Oh, yeah. Siegfried and Roy would party it up, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they were crazy. Well, why not? Were they as crazy as Liberace with the parties? Oh, yeah, even more so. Because you had white tigers. In yeah, well, yeah. You had, not, yeah. You had, you know, would the you white... do coke in the same house as a white tiger? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's pushy. I mean, that's crazy. I just saw a white tire. <laughs> hey, uh, with with Michael Jackson, was it the same setup as with Liberace, where you were the batter and he was the catcher, or how, did that always work the same way? After the eight, yeah. I would always stay the batter, right? You well, like you're betting a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> you were like you were like Napa Joy A. Hey everybody, it's Keisha Koo. I did this uncensored and also without commentary. Um, this is Scott Thorson, um, part one and part two. I will be uploading um, uncensored audio, adding to the list. So everyone give their comments down below. Um, this is through his eyes of what happened with Liberace. And just everyone can comment down below. I love you all. Thank you to all my new subscribers. I miss y'all. And please like, share, and subscribe. And Keisha Koo signing out. I'll see y'all on the next one. He was a football cheerleader and didn't bang any of the, of the football guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> very nice. And sitting over here is a guy I'm, I'm very happy to meet. Scott Dorson. What's Thank up, you. man? How hey. are you? I'm fine. How about you? Good. Now, I just, you know, uh, I just watched your movie for the third time. Well, not your movie, but the movie that your uh, part of your life is yeah. based on. Behind the Candelabra with uh, with Liberace. Real fascinating stuff. John watched it as well. And, um, yeah. you know, uh, watching that film, I really have to say, you're a survivor, man. I'm glad you got through a crazy a crazy experience like yeah. that and well. <laughs> um and you're here to tell the tale uh nice to meet you well thank you it's it's an honor to be here yeah and uh, we're having a great time in New York. Yeah, now Dennis uh, has become a quick new friend of yours. He's a good man. Well, you know, Dennis bailed me out. Nobody else would touch me. You know, Weintraub, all of them, they turned their back on me. And uh, he came to my rescue, paying for my defense attorney. Jerry Weintraub, the producer of the Candelabra film. Uh, yeah. Who, and then Soderbergh directed it, right? Right. Yeah. Steven Soderbergh. These are heavyweights, man. Michael oh, yeah. Douglas, and you're played by Matt Damon. Matt Damon. We've yeah. got the best uh, producer, director, uh, cast. Uh, you can't go wrong. I mean, the the the, the picture is number one here in this uh, yeah, at no, HBO. And it's good. And it's, it's really good. yeah. And it's number one in Europe. It's all the European countries have picked it up. Now you got into some trouble. What happened recently? Where you had well, to build that? <laughs> well, you know, as a, I don't think anybody in life sets out to be an addict. And, of course. And unfortunately, we do some stupid Look, man, things when I'm, we're I'm under the influence. I'm with you here, man. You're not going to find any judgment from me, man. Yeah. I'm an addict. Well, it was misuse of credit card and, right. and ID, and. Uh, uh, you know, he's hired me, David Houston, the finest uh, attorney that money can buy. A good man. Oh, a good yeah. man, Dennis. Uh, yeah. good, good for you, man. I'll take care out. of him. You know, yeah. what happens is Chrissy Summers over here, uh, my little cheerleader, and, right. and Madam Suzette, who you yeah. know, uh, Madam, they saw the movie and just felt such compassion for him. The next morning, they're in my office saying, right. what, we got to get this guy out of jail. I'm like, why? <laughs> and uh, so they said, look, at he, he was a young guy, 16. Started right. having sex with the biggest celebrity, maybe of one the of the biggest. Last, now, is that a little bit? What was it? Sick, where, 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 the, I was sixteen. In the yeah. movie, when, wow. uh, the, the, the the scene where it depicts you meeting him backstage, you were sixteen at that time. Sixteen. Yes. Okay. You went to see him in concert uh -huh. in Vegas. Okay. Yeah. Then he then he takes a.